Hello, and this time we're doing a quick recap of probability. There's three things uh, to talk about. Uh, relative frequency slash experimental probability, because they're kind of the same thing. Um, theoretical probability and using sample space diagrams. So starting on the left here, I've got a load of uh, information, a load of data. Let's say it's a spinner um, that has been spun and this is the the outcomes of doing 20 spins and if we want to have an estimate we don't know whether this is an eight-sided spinner it could be ten-sided and just nine and ten never uh, came up it could be uh, eight-sided but not all sides are the same uh, size so maybe there's uh, you know the spinner hand in the middle but you know the two section is this big and the five section is much smaller and so we don't know if all of these things are equally likely so what we're doing is we're going to use the previous data to make a prediction about what the probability might be in the future so uh, if we want the probability of rolling a two we can say okay well what's the relative frequency how many times have we had a two so one two three four twos out of a total of 20 spins and that is if you cancel them both down by four that's one fifth so based on the experimental uh, probability based on what's happened already we're suggesting that the chance of getting a two on this spinner is one fifth whereas the probability of getting a seven there's one seven there and a second seven there. There's only two of them, so that's two over 20. The probability is one out of 10. So we can look at what's more likely, you know, should you be putting your money on a two coming up or on a seven coming up? Well, this would suggest that a two is more likely. The only thing you have to be careful with using relative frequency uh, and experimental probability is you need to have an idea of um, how how many tests you've done so doing this spinner 20 times isn't the most wonderful uh, you know wonderful predictor uh, especially not if you're going to start putting money on it uh, I think if you you know did it a hundred times or possibly even more than that you'd have a bit more confidence uh, that things uh, that the probabilities were closer and if you want to get the experimental probability to become very very accurate and become close to the theoretical probability you have to do many many more trials and that's uh, that's often an exam question is how can you improve the accuracy of these experimental probabilities you do more trials you do more experiments you you run the test more so that you've got uh, more chance of the numbers that just haven't come up because that's just how random things work, more chance for them to climb back up and, and claim the right number. So that's looking in the past. This is what has happened. And we said, how many times did it happen the way we wanted? How many times did we get a two over how many times did we do something? And that gave us a, a proportion, a fraction decimal percentage, uh, which shows the probability of that thing happening. But if we want to do it with theoretical probability well you've got to be careful uh, because it will only work if you know uh, how to compare different things happening but rolling a 12-sided dice we will assume that this is a regular 12-sided dice so that means that uh, it has got equal likelihood of each of the 12 sides being landed on uh, so that you know it's not that one number is more likely than another and we do a very similar process to this making the um making the fraction we say oops uh the probability of getting a prime number is well we have to say how many prime numbers are there how many ways are there of getting what we want so two three five seven and eleven are the prime numbers uh between one and twelve uh so that's five on the top over and there's a total number of outcomes of 12. So it's very similar. Instead of saying how many times did we get what we want over the total, it's saying how many ways are there of getting what we want? How many ways are there of getting a prime number over the total number 
of possible outcomes. And again, that's it. That's the probability, but looking at what might happen rather than what has happened. I think from a from a reliability point of view, if you can work out a theoretical probability, it is going to be more accurate than an experimental probability. But there are some things you just can't do uh, with uh, theoretical. You have to do an experimental because you just can't calculate it, you can't count it in this way. Um, it only works because each of these 12 sides are equally likely to come up, and that's why we can just do the counting trick. If things had different probabilities, it would either be a much more complicated calculation, or it just wouldn't be possible. And we'd have to just say, well, this is, this is what has happened in the past, um, and carry on. Okay, and then the last thing is if two things are happening, then sometimes it helps to do a sample space diagram. And all that a sample space diagram does is write out all the possible outcomes. Uh, it just helps you to write them out systematically so you can then answer the question. So if two six-face dice are rolled and numbers on them are multiplied together, we can draw a little table. Let's say we get a one, two, three, four, five, or six on the first die a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 on the second, and then the outcome is what we get when we multiply the numbers together. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, and 36. So now we have all the possible outcomes in this table. Yes, just these, these 36 possible outcomes. We can now answer the question, what's the probability of a score greater than 8? Now, it doesn't say equal, so we're not going to count the 8s. So we are going to include these, but not the 8s themselves. So it's this my zigzagging line. These are all the possible ways that we could do it. And then it's exactly the same as we did here, which is very similar to what we did here, which is just to say how many ways are there? All of these are equally likely, because these are equally likely, these are equally likely. So any of these 36 outcomes are equally likely. So we can just say that the probability of scoring greater than an 8 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 out of 36 possible outcomes. And we could cancel that down uh, to 10 over whatever half of that is, 18, which cancels again to 5 over 9, assuming I've done my cancellation properly. In a GCSE exam, it's always sensible to put that big fraction first, 20 over 36, because if I mess up my cancelling down, they'll just mark this and give me full marks. Um, it's called ignoring subsequent working. So if I have made a mistake, and I'm sure if I have, you'll let me know in the comments, uh, then it doesn't matter. Those, those answers uh, don't stop me from getting full marks for doing the probability correct, um, because they're not testing me on, can I simplify fractions? in this question. Obviously somewhere else there'll be a question on that and you would lose the marks if they say simplify this or show in its simplest form then yes there is a mark but on this one just write the, the big one down first and then yes you can simplify it if you want and you can always do it on the calculator if you want to be sure that you haven't made a mistake. So those I think are the three sort of basic probability ideas um, using what you already know to get an experimental probability by looking at the relative frequency, how many fours are there compared to the total, that's why it's called relative frequency, the number of, uh, sorry, the number of twos, we had four twos, the number of twos compared to the total, that's relative frequency, experimental probability. Rolling, uh, sorry, theoretical probability, when e all things are equally likely, you just say how many ways do you get what you want over the total, and a sample space diagram just allows you to systematically work out all of the outcomes, so once again you can just count up how many ways are there that you get what you want out of the total number of ways. Anything I've missed out, let me know and I'll address it uh, if you leave a comment down below, uh, otherwise cheerio.